This is how I used Warp to vibe code a WhatsApp clone that even stores messages in the database all without leaving my terminal. That's right, no cursor, no windsurf, and no clawed code. Why am I just using the terminal? Because it's fast. I mean, look at how quickly this project loads up in NeoVim compared to Cursor. Wow. Okay, so this is Warp. I'm in the DevRel folder, and right now it's predicting my next command, which is not going to be LS. What I'm going to do is paste in this prompt. So I've said I'd like to create an instant messaging app that uses Bun's WebSocket on the back end, React with Vite and TypeScript on the front end to communicate with the Bun server. Side note, Bun's WebSocket implementation is really, really good. Anyway, back to the prompt. The Bun server also needs to batch messages in memory, then periodically send them to a Postgres database from Neon that you can connect to using these details. This is so that when a new user joins the app, they can see all the old messages. So hopefully Warp can figure out that I actually want to display previous messages for a new user to see. Okay, final sentence now. Can you make the UI look as much as WhatsApp as possible from the buttons to the background and even the font? And if you have any questions, please ask before you start. Seems detailed enough, but before we go ahead and hit that enter button, you can see right now that Warp has gone into agent mode indicated by these stars over here. And this happens whenever you type any natural language into the terminal. Now, if I wanted to, I could click here and change the model. But because this is a really complex task, I want Warp to do as much planning as possible before generating any code. So to do that, I'm going to switch from pair to dispatch by typing command shift I on my keyboard. This is going to use OMON for planning and Claude 3.7 for execution. Now I'm going to hit enter and let Warp go to work. Dispatch mode is fully autonomous, so I can't really do much to influence the code that's generated, but it does respect the rules that I've set in Warp's memory, and it should ask for my permission before running commands in the deny list. Okay, it looks like Warp has come up with a plan. So it's going to build a WhatsApp-like instant messaging platform with a monorepo setup. Might be a bit much, but we'll leave it, which is going to include the bun server. This is all looking good. So it's going to create a top-level folder called WhatsApp clone, then it's going to make three directories, a backend, frontend, and sharing. This is nice because both projects are going to be using TypeScript. Therefore, it does make sense to have a shared folder to share interfaces. Configure a root level package JSON or yarn slash PNPM workspace for dependency management. Now, because I did mention bun, I kind of would have liked it to use the bun workspace alternative, but this is fine. Okay, we're going to be sharing some types. This all looks good. Export the interface, database setup, and it's going to create three tables outline the schema and store connections. Okay, this is interesting. I'm not sure how much experience Warp has with using Neon, but let's see if it's actually able to pull this off. And then it's going to create the front end using React, TypeScript, and Vite. Perfect. It's going to have a left panel chat list, just like WhatsApp. Awesome. Right panel for conversations with patterns background. This is exactly what I wanted. Messages in bubbles. Perfect. Round corners, teal and green. Awesome. And then it's got testing and optimization and even includes some next steps. This is going to do a lot more than I would have done. Let's press shift and enter and let it loose to create this project. Now, as you'd expect, this may take a while. So I'm going to fast forward the video until it's done. Okay, so after around 10 minutes, it looks like Warp is done with our project, but it wasn't all smooth sailing. If we scroll up to see what it actually did, we can see there was this one time that I manually had to run a server and stop it so that Warp could verify that it's working correctly. We can also see that up here, it's gone ahead and installed Tailwind, which I didn't tell it to do. But anyway, it installed the latest version of Tailwind, but it had a bit of trouble trying to initialize it. My assumption is that it's treating Tailwind 4 just like Tailwind 3, which is configured in a different way. But apart from that, everything looks good. I'm going to press Command I to get out of agent mode, go to the parent directory and inspect it with superfile. Wow, okay, so we have a backend, a frontend and a shared directory, but it seems the frontend directory is empty and we have two extra directories down here, the what-app clone and the WhatsApp clone, which also has a backend, a frontend and a shared folder along with a WhatsApp clone folder. Oh boy. Let's go back and take a look at the backend folder. 
which also has a WhatsApp clone folder with a backend, a frontend, and a shared. But luckily, all of these are empty, so I can go ahead and delete that, and we can see what's in the source for this backend. So it's correctly got bun installed with a bun lock file and a bun fig toml, but inside the source file, it looks like it's got a frontend TSX file, which is odd because we're in the backend folder. If we take a look at that, we can see we have an API test, an app which is using React, and a frontend.tsx. This, of course, is not what I expected. Let's go back up to the parent. We'll take a look at this WhatsApp clone directory, which has a backend that also has another WhatsApp clone directory with an index.ts. If I open that with NeoVim, we can see we have a bunch of interfaces at the top, a database URL with a connection string, and we have some database queries to create the users table, the conversations table, and the messages table with some constraints. Then it logs the database and has a function called start message flusher, which periodically flushes messages to the database. This is exactly what I asked for. If we scroll down a bit, we can see we have a function here to flush messages to the database, and we can see it's inserting these messages into the messages table with all this information. Let's continue to scroll down. We have a queue for the messages, a get conversation history function, and we have a WebSocket broadcast function, which isn't the correct way of broadcasting messages using the bun WebSocket. But anyway, down here, it's created the bun server correctly. It's created the bun WebSockets correctly, but it's missing the TypeScript type for the data. And this is why this error exists. And if we scroll down, we have some information about the user and the message is broadcasted. So aside from a few small issues, this backend file looks good. Let's take a look at the front end. We're going to go into the front end folder, go to WhatsApp UI, and this looks a bit more promising. We have a source and another WhatsApp clone directory, but let's ignore that and take a look at the source. It has an index, it has a main.tsx with an app, and this looks to just contain the default React and button code, which is not what I expected. So let's exit and let's try and find something that resembles WhatsApp. So we go into WhatsApp clone, into WhatsApp clone again, then front end, WhatsApp UI. And then inside the source directory, we seem to have some components, some services, and an app.tsx file. Now this looks a lot more promising. If we head into the components, we have a chat header, chat window, message bubble, message input, and sidebar. We have a services for the WebSocket service, which looks like it contains the correct TypeScript types, along with some event listeners and some connections to the WebSocket server. And if we go back and look at the app.tsx file, this seems to be importing the components correctly, but it has some mock users, which I wasn't expecting, and some mock conversations. Okay, so it looks like we've finally found the correct frontend and the correct backend directory. Let's run both projects to see if they work. So after moving a couple of files around, I've got the frontend in WhatsApp clone slash frontend slash WhatsApp UI and the backend on WhatsApp clone slash WhatsApp clone slash backend. And that seems to have got the WebSocket running correctly. Okay, so we have something that looks like it works. I mean, it's missing the CSS, but it has some test conversations. But let's see if we can actually start a conversation. I'm going to click on this icon up here and that does nothing. Same with this one. Okay, let's have a look at the code and see if we can fix this. So in the front end project, I'm going to say, it looks like this project is using Tailwind, but I don't want it to. Can you replace all the Tailwind with regular CSS? I'm going to change that to dispatch mode and then hit enter. And just like last time, it's giving me a step-by-step -step list of how it's going to achieve this task. I can, of course, refine it, but I'm going to leave it for now because it looks good. And now that that's done, we can see that each component has its own CSS folder, which is actually a super impressive process. I mean, going through all the code to rip out all the Tailwind classes and convert them to a vanilla CSS file is no small feat. So well done, Warp. Let's take a look at what the browser looks like now. Wow, okay, this is completely transformed. I mean, it's missing the logo, but this looks a lot like WhatsApp. If I click on this, it shows nothing. And if I click on this, okay, wow, we get some more icons here. And clicking on here doesn't do anything. Well, I think that's clicking on here. But clicking here shows me a drop down menu, which doesn't do anything. But the million dollar question is can I type in messages? So if I type the word test and hit enter, wow, it shows up with the correct timing. I mean, again, this looks a bit funny here. Maybe it's supposed to be showing the profile picture. But if I now refresh the browser, the data is lost, which means it's not saving to the database. 
So let's go ahead and look at the code to figure out how we can fix it. So looking at the backend bun server, I get a lot of errors. I'm going to scroll up to the top so I can see what the first one is. And we can see here it's something related to missing a foreign key constraint. So what I'm going to do is copy this whole error message. I'm going to press Control T to make a new tab. And then I'm going to press SPF to go into Superfile, then open this inside NeoVim. Now I could use agent mode in warp to look through this file and pinpoint the exact error. But while I've got this file open in NeoVim, let's go ahead and use Avante or Avante. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but to use it, I can press leader AA and then I'm going to ask it, why do I get this error? And paste the error in. I'll leave it to finish generating its response. And it looks like the error happened when I'm trying to insert a message with a conversation ID that doesn't exist in the conversations table. So it's given me a bunch of code to fix this issue. And I'm going to press shift A to apply that code. And then I'm going to apply it to my project, save my project and restart the server. So if we try to add another message and refresh the page, Nice, okay, it looks like it's saved in the database. We can verify that by going into Neon, opening the messages table, and we can see that our test message is here, which means that it should be persisting. We can add a few more messages to verify this, and these also show up in our database. There are actually a few more features that this project has that I discovered by accident. Let me show you. So if we have two different browsers side by side, and I start typing into one of them, the other one has some bubbles waiting for the message to show up. Also, if I quit the bun server and then go back to the browser, we can see this handy message at the top saying that it's connecting to the server. So the user will know that any messages typed will not be sent. I think this is a good place to stop. You can kind of see where this is going. If I wanted to, I could keep asking prompts to Warp and Avante to add features and fix some more bugs but the app we have right now is already a good proof of concept that would have taken me much longer to build myself from scratch. And before you go, let me know if you want to see more of these vibe coding videos. I actually kind of enjoyed making it. 